Hey everybody, my name is Jared Tate and I am the founder of the Digibyte blockchain and I am coming to you today, uh, today, March, uh, Wednesday, March 27th, 2024, I'm coming to you with a Digibyte development update. Uh, but before I do that, one of the things I want to start doing with all my videos is give you a quick introduction to what Digibyte is. Digibyte is a 10 year old, truly decentralized, independent blockchain. So there is no central company for Digibyte. There are no paid employees. We're all volunteers and uh, there was no mass pre-mine. Digibyte, if you love Bitcoin and you like Bitcoin, you'll absolutely love uh, Digibyte. Just uh, try sending a transaction today for yourself. 40 times faster than uh, Bitcoin. We've got five independent mining algos. If you want to learn more, which you should, go to digibyte.org. Now with that, um, I want to get into the uh, development update. And the first thing I want to do is thank everybody who has contributed to help fund me work full time uh, for a month. I've uh, just hit a little bit over a full month um, of funding, which is great. And there's been about 85 different people that have contribute, contributed. So thank you to all of you. Uh, I don't know all your names, but um, your donations and your contributions are what make Digibyte uh, decentralized and help move it forward. So thank you for all that. Um, now let's get into the actual update here on uh, what's going on. What's the latest? You know, I wanted to get this video out, um, you know, a few days ago over the weekend, but I was in the process. I spent basically most of the weekend fixing the remaining uh, functional tests. So at this point, I'm happy to say all of the unit, which are the C++ tests and the Python functional tests, have been fixed. So there's almost 700 of those. I think there's like 687 or something like that total. Those are very important because as we move forward and we make changes to the protocol, um, any developer can run those and it'll tell us if we just broke something, which actually we kind of stopped, forgot to do that. And we actually ended up breaking a lot of things. So there was about a hundred of those tests that were failing. So it's important that with every pull request and change that we make, <coughs> oh, excuse me, that we run those tests. So those are all done. Uh, and in fact, I actually was working this morning uh, to compile the binaries for a 8.22 RC4 release. And I was hoping to get that out before I did this video. Unfortunately, I ran into a Windows build error, <laughs> um, which was caused by the fix that we implemented to enable Digibyte to be compiled for Apple Silicone or the new M series Apple chips. So kind of funny that in order to fix Apple, we broke Windows. So I'm gonna have to start fixing that. Um, I'll start working on that this afternoon. But unfortunately, I was not able to get the binaries compiled so people could actually download them after, we, after they saw this video and start testing. But RC4 is to a point that I think uh, we should get it out. Um, we have, uh, there's been a ton of changes. In fact, if I go here to the release notes, um, the big changes are, uh, we fixed an import bug. So older people that are running version uh, seven and before they've had an issue when they've tried to import their old wallet dot that's, that's fixed, um, which is important, which I think we need to get it out as quick as we can. And that was partially due to a Coinbase maturity bug, which was fixed. And then also, uh, we've went ahead and just like Bitcoin made descriptor wallets the new standard when you go in and you create a new wallet. Uh, this has a, a myriad of benefits and will help uh, make things a lot easier in the future. You can read more about that if you want uh, by looking here on GitHub. Um, anyway, uh, I, I believe it's ready. Um, like I said, we just got to get this Windows compilation error fixed and hopefully maybe today, maybe tomorrow, maybe by this weekend, we will get an RC4 release out. Um, and like I said, I think it's important since we've made a lot of changes over the last couple months to get that out and to get more testers involved. Now, after that, what's needed for a remaining final release of 8.22? And I know I'm just as eager as you to get an 8.22 out. I know there's a lot of apps that people have to be built. Um, it'll be a big process, but um, there's, I think, three main things to discuss before a final release after RC4. Uh, number one is to absolutely make sure Dandelion and Mempool, which Dandelion is the privacy enhancing feature of 
uh, Digibyte when you send a transaction. It helps anonymize your IP so um, listeners out there can't map who's sending what to whom. Um, there have been some issues with that implementation, and I'm not convinced it's 100% working as it should. So that would be the next thing after RC4 I want to uh, get into. But then for a final release, we need to discuss Taproot, which uh, Taproot right now, the configuration is uh, um, in an RC4 release, it's delayed indefinitely. I think there's a lot of benefits to a Taproot upgrade. It will require a soft fork, so we got to plan it. We have to decide on a date, you know, 6 to 12 months in the future when it goes into effect. But there's a lot of benefits, mainly, in my opinion, Schnorr signatures, which um, are highly, highly advantageous uh, to future smart contract development. Um, there's a lot of info about that if you want to learn more about Schnorr signatures. I think we should do it, but I think it's a conversation we need to have with the community. You know, there's some concerns like what we saw with Bitcoin and ordinals. Um, if Digibyte enables Taproot, uh, you basically could fork ordinals and deploy it straight on top of Digibyte. So the question is, would that result in a lot more spam? Would that cause a lot more issues? You know, that's something I think the community needs to talk about and discuss. Uh, and then the final thing is there's been a proposal uh, by one of the community members, Ollie, uh, to change um, the very smallest unit of a digibyte, which is commonly referred to as stat, uh, sat, you know, a satoshi, you know, uh, basically eight places to the right. Well, in our wallet, it actually um, still says sat. Well, he's like, well, why don't we change it to something else? So there's been some ongoing discussion and one of the proposal was to call the smallest unit of a digibyte, maybe call it a digibit. However, there's some people that disagree with that. So there's a healthy debate going on on, uh, whoops, ahead of myself here, on, uh, we'll go to the pull request here, on GitHub. And I think we should get more, as you can see here, this is what it would look like in the wallet. Uh, the smallest unit would be called a, a digibit. That's the proposal. I've reviewed this pull request. Um, Ollie's got all the tests working. It compiles. It works great. It runs. And actually, it's ready to merge if we get enough approval. But there's uh, been some healthy discussion on if this is appropriate or not and confusing. So I want to put this out to the community. Maybe we could do a Twitter poll. Maybe we could get the guys to put together a poll on the main uh, Digibyte Twitter um, you know, what do you think? Should we change the name of the smallest unit um, of a digibyte? You know, eight, de eight decimal places, 0. 0.00000001. Uh, should that be named something different or should we just keep it simply called the sat to denominate that low unit? You know, I'm, I'm indifferent, um, but I don't want to be the person who decides whether this is a yes or no. So what do you think as a community? Put your, your comments out here. Um, and, and thanks to Ollie, by the way, for, for doing all the work and doing this. I know that you put a lot of effort into this uh, last couple days. Um, so, yeah, so that kind of sums up where we are with 8.22 at the moment. Like I said, as soon as I finish this video, get it out. I'm going to work on this Windows build, build error, hopefully get some binaries out. Uh, iOS is still the same as before. Um, we can't really fully update that wallet um, until we get a final version of 8.22 out. Um, and in the meantime, if you have fun stuck in there, you can try uh, DigiSweep or you can try annually adding some manual seed nodes and people have had success getting their funds uh, um, out there. So uh, for the, to finish this video off, I'll give you the current stats. This is Digibyte Stats. It's a local uh, web service and program that I'm running that I've been working on for about a year. Uh, currently, we're almost about to break 19 billion, or not, not billion, uh, 19 million blocks in our blockchain. We're currently at uh, 18,998,000. So we're literally one of the longest and oldest uh, blockchains in the world. So uh, with 100% uptime. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, just about 46.5 million transactions total. The total size of the Digibyte blockchain is about 29 gigabytes on disk. Current mining reward is 351 digibytes. And the circulating supply, that's how many digibytes are out there, is about 16.9 billion. Uh, and there's about just over 4 billion digibytes left to be mined between now and the year 2035. Uh, the current 
release version out there is RC3. We've had about 200 people download it to help test. Before that, 500 with RC2. Um, I'm seeing a lot of nodes on the network that are still version 7, which as you can see here, we've had 27,000 downloads. So that's the majority of the network still. So that's why we really need to get this final version of 8.22 out. Uh, here's a breakdown in the last 60 blocks by algorithm. Um, Digibyte, I don't know if you can see this, has, uh, Digibyte has five independent mining algorithms with real-time difficulty adjustment. So um, basically every block, each algo uh, is um, being updated and every algorithm should get about 20% of the blocks. So this is a little bit low number. You need about 500 to 1,000. I just started this service up that analyzes it. Eventually, I want to get this on a website so people can go to it at any time. Um, but it helps me kind of get a snapshot uh, whenever I run it of where the blockchain is. Uh, this is an example of the real-time difficulty adjustment over the last 60 blocks. You can see that unlike Bitcoin, which takes two weeks to have a single one of these adjustments, uh, just in the last, what, 10, 15 minutes, you've got, what, six, well, basically 60 blocks, 60 adjustments. So, that's what helps keep Digibyte much more secure and much more decentralized with 100% uptime after a decade. So uh, one of the other things I was working on, my local node has seen, since I booted it up about 15 minutes ago, has seen 14 different nodes. Uh, this is only the nodes that my own wallet is connecting to right now, which as you can see, they're all over the world. So Digibyte really is one of a handful of the only truly decentralized blockchains out there. You know, and that's why I'm passionate about working on it a decade later. Um, you know, and with that, I like I said, I want to thank everybody who's helped contribute to help fund me full time. You know, I asked and I said, if I can earn about 5K a month, that'll cover my living expenses and my bills. Well, I did it for one month. So thank you all. Um, you know, but that ends in about a week, you know, and I will always continue to work part time and to help review stuff. Um, uh, I'm in Digibyte for life, but obviously I got to pay the bills. So I do have some other part-time work lined up if I'm not able to continue doing this full-time, but you know, I'm very happy with what uh, people have contributed so far. So thank you for that. But if you'd like to help contribute, um, you know, here's my Digibyte address, uh, PayPal and Zell, Jared at JaredTate.com. And I would also like to encourage the other developers that are working on projects to post addresses put stuff in their bios so people can help contribute it. Because as I stated at the beginning of this video, Digibyte's truly decentralized. There is no company, there is no paid employees, there is no massive pre-mine, there is no centralized pool of funds, there is no group or founder that's going to dump on you like a lot of people have. And yes, there's a lot of misinfo and a lot of crap out there, but I can tell you every Digibyte I ever had, I mined, bought, or you know, has been contributed by the community, and I never once dumped at the top. So I, uh, I'm very happy that after 10 years, I can sit here before you and say, hey, I've been telling people that we'll be here for the long run, and 10 years later, we're still here. So with that, uh, look forward to a video next week and uh, RC4 release, and the more people we can help get uh, testing RC4, uh, the better. And uh, yeah, um, until next time, thank you.